أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يدل الله فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا إنه أصلك الكلام كلام الله إلى حدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإنما الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في البرعة وكل برعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى أيضا يا أيها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا سرق الله العظيم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أصحابه وأهل بيته أجمعين ومن اهتدى بإحسان إلى يوم الدين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى أما بعد we stand and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and send our praise countless times to Him in thanking Him, in acknowledging Him for all of the bounties that He has done upon us, that which we know about, that which we don't know about. Among the main ones, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the greatest of gifts, and that is the gift of hidayah, guidance for each and every one of us who are here sitting on this day of Jumu'ah. The day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have created this dunya. The day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have sent down Adam alayhi salam upon this earth. And this is the day on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring this world to an end. Subhanallah. Sabbih isma rabbika al-a'la. The reminder with us today is from a very important surah of the Qur'an of which Umar radiallahu an reported the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he received these ayat the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said on this occasion, ten such verses have been sent down to me that one who measures up to them will most certainly go to paradise. And these are the first ten verses of Surah Al-Mu'minun. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said to us first in this surah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Qad aflah al-mu'minun. قَدَ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying most definitely, without doubt, successful is the believer. Successful are the believers. Who is a believer? The believers are the one who will attain true success, are those who accept the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those who dedicate their lives to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَدَ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ who are the success and what is success? In the world that we live in today, success is sometimes thought of a good job, a lot of money, a beautiful house, a beautiful wife, lots of children. Having them all achieve the heights of education and a comfortable life, this is thought of to be success. So to thought the time in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this was the thought of the disbelievers. At the time of revelation of the surah, the people of Mecca, they were very, very successful in their trading and in their business. They were very affluent and influential people. And this was their ideology of success. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the surah Qad aflah al mu'minun that the believers are the ones who are successful. Their success are not measured based on their worldly exploits, are not based on what they achieve in this world in terms of how much money they have, in terms of how much people praise them, in terms of how many people know them, of how much influence they might have. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us there's a different type of success. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was revealed these words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ The first quality of a believer, the first quality of one who is to achieve it will be a successful believer, is one who in his salah he has khushu'. And what is khushu'? Khushu has been, have so many words to translate them, but in a nutshell, I will try to explain it. The khushu is to bow down oneself, to bow down and express humility. And you express humility, which is a condition of the heart as well as the body. Khushu of the heart is to fear and stand in awe of something that is powerful. Khushu of the heart, you know, when you see something amazing. You know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, let us say we see Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world. Subhanallah, you might gaze upon its beauty, its magnificence, its strength. You see a very strong person, maybe, subhanallah. Khushu of the heart is to, is to be in such awe of something because of its power. And khushu of the heart in this time is referring to be in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khushu of the body is to bow down one's head and lowers one's gaze and voice in his presence. When you're in front of your boss or somebody who's very powerful, you're not going to raise your voice above him. Some people might not even look him in the eyes. Khushu in salah is for us to achieve that state in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the description of Ihsan, he said is to stand and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you can see him for even though you can't see him, he is seeing you. Khushu and salah includes that we should be people that should not be shifting in our salah. That we should not be people that are looking around in our salah. We are looking at one place. Khushu and salah starts from the forming of the saf when we are praying salat al-jama'ah to make sure that it's straight, to make sure that there aren't gaps between us. Khushu and salah includes that when we come into the masjid, we prepare ourselves for salah. Today, subhanAllah, we have so much distractions around us. Primarily the cell phones. Just another brother had to remind someone, subhanAllah, we all forget sometimes. But when we're coming to the masjid, when we're coming here to pray salah, when we're going to salah, our mind should be about salah. This action that we are going to, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us that a successful believer is one who in his salah, he is in khushu'. His mind is away from everything of the world. Some of us, we have our jobs, we have our family, we have emergency, yes, no doubt. We need our cell phones, no doubt. But when we are coming to serve our Creator, in this action that is described as the key to Jannah, let us prepare for it. The way we will prepare for our exam, or a job interview, or if we have to travel, you know, many of us, we are immigrants, when we have to come to this country, we will prepare for that interview. We are coming to stand in front of the most powerful being, to praise and thank Him, and in obedience to Him, let us prepare for that. When we enter the masjid, let us take off our cell phones. Let us put the world behind us. Don't put it in front of us. SubhanAllah, I see sometimes we put our cell phones and our devices in front of us. And we are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell me, would that be a distraction? It's blinking, it's making noise, it's vibrating. And you're not, we're not only distracting ourselves, we're distracting those around us. Khushu in salah is not to raise our voice loudly when we are praying to disturb others. Nor should we recite the Quran in a singing way. It is not music. Khushu in salah is that when we stand for every single action, we are conscious, we are particular how we per perform every single act in salah. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a person, he once saw a man praying salah and he said, if he has khushu in his heart, it will be manifested in his body. 
And the scholars have described this as khudu' khushu' and khudu' in salah. The inner and outward manifestation of this humbleness and subservience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّهْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and those who turn away from evil speech, vain things. Allah, this word that is used here is describe anything nonsensical, anything that is meaningless, anything that doesn't have any value in terms of us fulfilling the one and single purpose in this life, and that is to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, a successful believer is one who turns away from this. How often don't we find a group of friends or a group of family members that we might find talking about something that is absolutely of no benefit? Might consist of even profanity. Might consist of lewd speech. And we find ourselves falling into that because, you know, we're human beings and we want to be among the, you know, the congregation, the group. We wanna, don't want to be secluded. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Qur'an, وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّهْوِ مَرُّوا قِرَامًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and when they pass by that which is vain, they pass like dignified people. They pass it and let it go. This includes that we should not be people who are insultive. We should not be people who ridicule and make fun of people. And subhanAllah, in our society today, it is a common thing. You look at the television, they have these roasts and all of these things that they make it as if it's a common place to involve in these sinful actions. We are Muslims, we are people striving for a higher purpose. A Muslim is someone who constantly we are responsible for our actions. Not only when we are at the masjid, not only in the month of Ramadan, not only when we are in front of the imam or the sheikh, no. All the time we are responsible. We are people who are responsible for our actions. Not our mothers, not our fathers, not our imam, not our shuyuf, not our teachers. No, we are responsible for ourselves. And our mindset should be like that. That is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اِتَّقِ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُ be aware of Allah, be conscious of Allah, fear Allah wherever you are in every single situation. And if we are cognizant of this, then anytime we find ourselves slipping, we will make that effort to rectify it immediately. Rectify it immediately. We are human beings, we will sin, we will slip up, we will make mistakes. But constantly we have to remind ourselves who we are and what we are here to do. And all of our actions should be inclined towards fulfilling this one purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continue. And now this is not for ourselves alone but for the others. And those who observe the zakah and spend it appropriately. The word zakah, my dear brothers and sisters, after we would, uh, you know, we would have compiled our wealth, we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, subhanallah, we are better off than some people then we have to give this Jew to the poor. No, this is not our money. This is not our wealth. The zakah doesn't belong to us. This is from, among, from part of the hudud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which we don't transgress. This is something that we owe. When we give the poor and the needy their zakah, when we give them sadaqah, this is not we doing them a favor, but rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for us an opportunity for us to do gain from His mercy, for us to fulfill our requirement. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us for those who give in their zakah. And what is zakah? What is zakah? Zakah means to purify something. So our wealth is not purified until we give our zakah. Because that requirement is upon us until we give what is required of us. Every single Muslim, every single one of us, we should know what we have. Our wealth, we should keep a cognizance, we should be conscious of this. And if you don't know how to give your zakah, consult your imam, consult the knowledgeable people around us, because not all of us might know everything. But strive, strive to figure out this so that you may not be unjust. You may not transgress and hold back from that which is due upon you. Do not, we are, uh, when we are given our zakah, my dear brothers and sisters, this is not the IRS in which we are trying to, you know, find where we have a tax break. No. 
We don't try to fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of my teachers, I remember him saying that, who are we going to try to fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We can't hide our wealth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, 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 you can't fool Allah. Let us try. We do not take away this two and a half percent or how much is it that you owe. Do not try to hide this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try your best to fulfill this duty. Even if it is one dollar, make sure you give that one dollar in zakah, my dear brothers and sisters. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes a very important part. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and those who guard your private parts, except from their wives or from those their right hands possess, for indeed they will not be blamed. But whoever seeks beyond that, in terms of lust for their desires, then those are the transgressors. What does it mean? What does it mean to protect our private parts? As a Muslim, we are people who are supposed to be modest in every sense of the word. We are people who are supposed to protect ourselves from any form of sexual perversion any form of sexual transgressions and look at our world today we are people who are moving away from this protection from this guardianship of our private parts protecting ourselves from immorality we look at our society today homosexuality is rampant we look at our society today xenophornication and adultery is commonplace we look at our society today uh, young unmarried couples having all sorts of relationships that subhanallah we see the effect of it and the divorce rates happening around us we see the effects of it of the loss of islamic consciousness in our society today allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us from among the qualities of one who is a believer of one who will inherit paradise is someone who protect their private parts but this is not to say that having sexual relations is a bad thing. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, illa, illa ala azwajhim, giving us the exception that this is something beautiful. This is something of the comforts and joys of this world that he has allowed the human being, but it must be kept within that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us. Within our marriage, between, our, uh, between a husband and wife. Keep that, protect that. And in that is the protection of our family values. We are, as young people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in a hadith that one of the people who will be protected under the shade of Allah on the day of Qiyamah, on the day in which there will be no shade, will be a youth who spent his youth in servitude to Allah, protecting himself, safeguarding himself from all of these uh, misguided and, and shameless actions. Is it an easy task? Definitely not. But it is something that we must strive to achieve. And if you find yourself slipping, turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek righteous company. Seek knowledge of Islam and spend our time to do the actions which will help to protect ourselves away from these sinful and misguided actions, my dear brothers and sisters. And I will tell you an importance of this from one of the narrations in, in Islamic history. Once the Muslim army, they were going out in battle. They were going out in battle. They were, you know, massive army, subhanAllah. And they came upon a river in which they needed to cross. When they came to this river, they didn't have a bridge or anything. So the emir of that army, he turns to his army and he said, If there's anyone among you here who have committed zina, step away. If there's anyone among you here who have committed zina, step away. Alhamdulillah, not a single one of them committed zina. And he said, Bismillah, and he rode across this river. But some say only the hooves, or not even the hooves of their horses being wet. Zina, my dear brothers and sisters, it comes in many forms. It comes, well, we know the illicit sexual relations, but zina also involves the eyes looking at that which is haram. Zina involves the, involves the ears listening to perverted speeches and music. 
Zina involves our hands in which we touch that which we are not supposed to touch. My dear brothers and sisters, we must safeguard our eyes, our ears, even our minds from such thought. And when it happens, seek the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For verily, this is one of the most easy things as believers that we can fall into. Protect ourselves, protect our society, protect our family from this. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ And those who are in their trust and their promises, they are attentive. When we give our word, we should hold on to it. A Muslim, when he makes a promise, it is something that, even if we say it lightly, it is something we must hold on to as if it's a contract, because it is a contract between you and that person. SubhanAllah, in our society today, we quickly say, Insha'Allah, Insha'Allah, Insha'Allah. Failing to realize that when we say Insha'Allah, it's not just saying, oh, it's another word to say, no, I'm not going to do it. But know that I will try to do this to the best of my ability, and I intend right now to do that, but as I know, I have no control over what might happen beyond my control. Insha'Allah, by the will of Allah, I'm going to do it. Not to say Insha'Allah to let it go, to get someone to stop bugging you or something. We should be people that hold on to our words. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the description of the qualities of a hypocrite, he said, "A hypocrite is someone when something is placed in his trust, he breaches that trust. When he speaks, he lies. When he makes a promise, he breaks it. And when he has a quarrel with someone, he exceeds all limits of decency and morality." These are the qualities of a hypocrite. My dear brothers and sisters, let us remember this. Let us try to protect our tongues from vain speech. Let us try not to make promises that which we know we can't hold to. And let us not give false representation. Let us not give false witness. Let us not be insultive and ridiculing of other people. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions before we come to the end of this point. Again here salah is mentioned in the beginning and in the end of these qualities of a believer. The first part were those, were, were those who have khushu' in their salah. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to protect our salawat, that which is prescribed upon us. Make sure that we pray our salah on time. Always on time in the earliest of times, my dear brothers and sisters. Do not procrastinate your salah. Telling us that we protect our salah by making sure that we are purified properly. That we pray all of our prescribed salah. We're not going to pray salah to uh, Zuhur and Asr and Maghrib and Isha and forget salah to Fajr. Or send our children to sleep before the time of salah to Isha. Oh, because they have to go to school in the morning so they need to go to sleep at 9 o'clock. But now Isha salah is 10, 10, 10, 15 in the evening. No. Protect our salah. Make that sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I mentioned earlier in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that salah is the key to Jannah. No person will enter Jannah without their salah, all of it being properly intact. Except by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salah is that important. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, a person who does all of these things, have khushu' in their salah, give their zakah, protect their tongues, protect their private parts, protect, uh, you know, are constant in their salah, then these are the inheritors. These are the people who will inherit. Inherit what? Then if we were to do these things, then we will be the inheritors of the inheritors of Jannah. Jannatul Firdaus al A'la. And these are the simple characteristics and qualities that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that this, if a person were to do them, Jannah is for them. Simple things, but we must be cognizant and aware of them. These are not qualities for any specific race or any specific people. This is for every single human being on the face of the earth. These excellence of character can only be attained through sincere faith and excellent moral qualities. And by absorbing all of the prescribed laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of our life. We can't be performing our salah yet go on the road and insult someone. We can't be giving our zakah and telling someone they're ungrateful because we give them our zakah. We can't come and pray five salah and one salah and two salah. No. All the time fulfill 
all of the prescribed actions. True success is not achieved in this world, my dear brothers and sisters. And the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this ayah at that specific time, this was a time when the believers were in a very difficult situation. And it used to be masqueraded to them that success in this world, just like how it is shown to us in this world today, that success is upon how much wealth or how much uh, anything you would have achieved in this world. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us no. Success is in the akhirah. Success is the one who entered the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And think about this. This is a thought that I would like for each and every one of us to leave here with, with today. Imagine to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. Just having to do these very few and seemingly simple actions. And yet we fail to do them. Fail to do the one single purpose we were sent to this world for. And that is to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be obedient to him. Our job, our family, our society. Everything else is there to support that. Let us not forget that. And if we were to hold on to this. By the ni'mah of Allah, with sincerity in our heart, by the ni'mah of Allah, by the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, each and every one of us will be from among those who are the inheritors of Jannah. I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. I mean, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our actions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to do those actions that are necessary of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all in any shortcomings that we might have in fulfilling any of his commandments. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the resilience, the resilience to continue upon his path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and accept from us. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وآخر دعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن اهتدى بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعمل متقبلا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر وبالعذاب جهنم ومن فتنة المحيا وممات ومن شر فتنة المصيح الدجال اللهم انصرنا اللهم احفظنا اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين في سوريا اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين في فلسطين اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين والمجاهدين في يمن وفي عراق وفي أفغانستان وفي شيشان وفي كشمير اللهم انصرهم اللهم اغفر لهم اللهم ارحمهم اللهم تقبل منا صلاتنا ودعائنا وقيامنا اللهم اهدنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا عباد الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واستعينوا يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقيموا الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر